I'm presenting a non-academic lecture. Uh, the title is The Pixelated Revolution. And it's about uh, the video clips uh, that were uh, produced or they were like shooted by uh, the Syrian protesters during the Syrian revolution in 2011. And I found these videos in, uh, on the internet. And uh, there is a sort of videos that really struck me, which uh, in these videos we can witness the eye contact between the killer and the protester while he is filming. And then we can see how the killer is aiming his gun towards the lens of the mobile phone and shoot. So we don't see the, the victim, the protester, because he's off camera. So the work is, uh, is about uh, these specific videos. And also it's about the specificity of the, of the videos that were uploaded by the Syrian protesters at that time, how we can read them, how we can uh, look at them. And, uh, and I, I try to analyze these kind of videos and brought some ideas, bring some ideas about them and thoughts. So in 2011 uh, there was like a kind of an uprising uh, protest uh, movement that started in uh, some cities in, uh, in Syria. And before that, there was uh, what we call the Arab Spring uh, uprising uh, in, in different cities in uh, the Arab world, which was mainly uh, a protest and uh, a struggle uh, against the regimes uh, who were oppressing the people. And it was uh, a kind of like uh, demand for uh, freedom of speech, for human rights, for more democracy. <laughs> for democracy, there is no democracy <laughs> there. So in this sense, it was like a kind of like uh, calling for uh, changing uh, a lot in the regime. And sooner it, it was uh, it turned into clashes with the authorities that they refused uh, to do these changes, and it uh, it start it it turned into a revolution, and the revolution in this sense it's where like uh, the people are uh, demanding like or like they are like fighting uh, against the regime, the whole regime to change the whole regime from the top to the bottom. Uh, the pixelated revolution, it, is, uh, it comes from the pixels of the image itself. That was one of the main characteristics of the videos uploaded by the protesters, uh, the Syrian protesters, where like it, it was uh, the, the images and the videos were like very low resolution. Uh, and the word of Hitush Tyre, like poor images in this sense were like pixeled, low resolution, uh, blurry, etc. So uh, in this sense, like I, I use the word pixel because there were a lot of pixels and not because only the, the resolution of the filming, uh, it's also of like uploading, re-uploading, re-uploaded, re-uploaded by different uh, sites. So it becomes losing more resolution, it become like more pixelated. So I call it the pixelated revolution uh, because of this. If we are talking about uh, the Syrian protesters uh, and uh, the beginning of also the uprising in the Arab Springs, where like the protesters were like uh, holding their mobile phones and start to to record what's happening in this sense like the the mobile phone and the images was like a kind of uh, part of the body it becomes part of the body uh, it's not like uh, 
a camera that uh, that is fixed on a tripod and also it's not like uh, someone who is like looking for like a nice scene or nice event like or like interesting event or like something to shoot no they are shooting all the time so it's like our eyes all the time recording but also if we're talking about wars uh, and uh, and conflicts uh, uh, during the wars, like the cameras are like, uh, and the eyes are like a little bit uh, different also. Like, you know, like we witnessed during the the Iraqi war, uh, the first one, uh, like the cameras are uh, on the tanks and the tanks is moving and it becomes like a video games where like you see like another side of the war, which is almost virtual like almost like it's not the war so you don't see victims you see only the the tanks the americans are like moving in the streets and the streets are empty uh, and they are shooting uh, this there is destruction but you don't see victims you don't see like it's clean things so it's the other side or like the contrition of uh, the images of uh, of the fighters and also there is another another sort of uh, of images which is like the images that are controlled by uh, by uh, humans by the bodies and uh, f and they are controlled from distance and the distance could be like really very far and one example is the drones uh, with the images that are capturing and like uh, and taking and also there is like these images which uh, Harun Faruqi uh, talks about, like the suicidal cameras that are on the rocket itself and goes and like, but it's also recording the cameras before it is suicide. So there are like different, uh, different types and it's all a way interesting to study and to think about what is behind them, what is the meaning behind them. This uh, presentation, the pixelated revolution, is uh, is a lecture form, so it's not a performance. Uh, and this is uh, why I call it non-academic lecture because I don't I don't want to interfere the word performance, because I'm not performing, I'm just lecturing. But uh, since I'm not uh, a lecturer, I'm an artist. Uh, I do videos as well and theater, so uh, I'm not academic in the sense and the word. Uh, uh, so uh, in this sense, uh, uh, my lecture is not academic, purely academic. And it, uh, it enters to it a lot of uh, uh, subjectivity. Uh, a lot of uh, sometimes fictional, sometimes ideas that are still unfinished, that still to be discussed with others. So, uh, so it's unfinished work, which propose and share with the audiences, proposed to the others to, to share with them. So in this sense, like the body is just sitting and the moving images is, is there. So there is no relation between the the one who is doing the presentation, if you want to call it the performer, and the images and and the audience, the spectators. So it's like it's a classical uh, relationship. I did this non-academic lecture uh, in the end of 2011, and in 2012, it took like the the last uh, version. Uh, and since then, I didn't change much in it, except one uh, one issue, and it's a dramatic thing. Because like for years, I presented this work in the present tense. So it is now happening. And then it changed while the war changed and, and it's not the same in Syria. Everything shifted and the revolution faded. I don't want to to say it's killed, but it's faded out. So I changed the tense. It 
becomes in the past tense. So I say like it was, it were, instead of it is, now. So this is the the the, the, the main changes that happened in the text. And this is good because like uh, because this this lecture and this uh, presentation is a live presentation. Uh, so if we're talking in, in a film festival, so if it was a video, then it would have been stayed the same, like in the present tense, because it's recorded. But since it's a live film or live presentation, so I would change. And of course, like there is always a margin of improvisation. So sometimes I improvise a little bit during the show or the presentation. And, and of course, there is always like in cinema, the Q&A, which also make like this uh, uh, relation, live relation with, uh, with the spectators. No one can know how to deal with it, with the catastrophe, theoretically, unless you really are in the catastrophe itself. You can imagine yourself, what can I do, what we can do in the catastrophe, but it's not the same when you are in the catastrophe. In the catastrophe, things are completely different. And this is something that I experienced uh, in, in Lebanon, where, there, where we were in different catastrophes, at least in my life, like with during wars and wars and wars, until today now, the day of this interview, still there are wars. <laughs>